Okay, just a quick review of the West Tones. I didn't see a long-term review anywhere uh, in YouTube, but I wanted to just comment on my experience owning these for the past three years now. They have been fantastic overall. I recommend them overall. A couple of things to keep in mind, though. If you invest this kind of money in West Tone, you want to be aware that eventually you are going to have to send these things back when these little plastic soft part of the monitor starts to break and separate from the hard part. It's just going to happen. Uh, I don't know if there's any real way they can make these things last longer, but you can see that the, the hard plastic, if I can turn around here, right there where the soft meets the hard, this soft, this, this softer clear plastic gets soft as it t contacts body heat and the hard plastic stays the way it is. This is like what dice are made out of. And eventually that joint where it, where it connects starts to get some cracks and you can sort of see here maybe. So eventually that's probably gonna just flake off and, and break. You take the monitors, send them back to West Tone, you take new impressions at your audiologist and have some new plastic put on them. Then the other side's doing the exact same thing along there. You can see the cracks. Yeah, right along the bottom of that right there. There's a little crack. So that's what I'm going to anticipate doing maybe in another year or two. We'll see how it holds up. But um, it's it's unavoidable. It's just something they haven't been able to to get by and uh, the, the, the dynamics of body heat heating up one part of it that's designed to expand against another part that is not just create that situation. So that's number one. Number two, the cable you can see is not a West Tone cable. It's a white cable from a company called uh, Nabunga. I bought this in Japan and this was a less expensive cable. It's maybe 5,200 yen, about $47. I got it at Bit Camera, which is a large electronics chain. Uh, I went to the one in Tokyo and they had, they must've had 10 different 3.5 millimeter on one end and MMX cable, that's those on the other alternatives uh, that would work wonders for you no matter which one you picked. And this was, like I said, one of the less expensive ones. You can spend all the way up to 32,000 yen, uh, which is about 300 bucks. I didn't go that crazy, but if you want to, the differences in sound, night and day, because I'm hearing things with these cables that I did not hear with the Westone cable. Uh, the Westone cable is probably okay for phone calls if you have an Apple, because the controls here for the, the Westone those only worked with the Apple, and even then, this is a 3.5 millimeter jack, which no longer works with the new Apples. But this button here on an Android would only uh, answer and hang up the call, and the volume controls wouldn't do anything. The microphone was good, but the rest of it, not so much. And in, in terms of listening to music, forget about it. There's no comparison. The music sounds in these cables, these ones I bought were, I mean, I heard background, background singers. I heard more precise percussions. I heard uh, crowd uh, sounds in, in the live recordings that I would not normally have heard. Uh, it's just, it opens up a whole new experience because, uh, you know, you're so impressed already by just getting these things in your ears and listening to them is so much better than regular headphones. You couldn't think it'd get any better, but it does. And if you'll notice, musicians don't use those types of cables with the with the controls because they're not looking to make phone calls on stage. So they're using something similar to this. And most of these will not have those uh, those controls. It's got the spot where it splits here, and then it's got a part that can, that can cinch up, you know, and bring them up to your, your face a little bit tighter, wherever that is. Yeah. So to each his own, if you're going to listen to movies or music through the plane system, you need a solid cable anyway. Um, if the pilot gets on, you just have to disconnect that from the jack. Uh, there's no way to, to pause it or anything like that, but it doesn't bother me. I, I get these things to listen to, not to be interrupted. Um, if you're going to run with them, they might not be the best for, for exercising, but these really, I don't think are suitable for exercising anyway. Um, if you get sweat or anything in them, you definitely got to make sure you use the deskant right there to dry it out. You place these monitors in the case and you let the deskant do its work. That's this thing here. And the uh, the deskant, as it as it sucks up moisture, it will turn color. These things used to be orange. Uh, now the newer deskants are purple, but the same function. Um, they start out purple. Eventually they, they suck energy or uh, moisture from the headsets into here, they turn color, you pop it in the microwave, dry it out for 30 seconds, cool it off, and you can use it again. Eventually, though, they do need to be replaced. Uh, you get a new one for five, maybe $10 on Amazon, and you're back in business. And oh yeah, if you're gonna be in the airplane, you need one of those adapters, that two-prong thing, because some airplanes still use that. Uh, so it's kind of a rookie mistake not to have it. Uh, if you must have something that's good for phone calls, okay, save this for music, and then go get yourself a Bluetooth adapter like this. This is the Shure BT2. This works just fine with my Amazon. It's got the MMX connectors, connects right to the, the units. No problem at all. This unit here, the, the battery pack, that lasts about 10 hours on a full charge and it charges right through the back there. You can see that that little fl gate flips open and there's a micro USB goes in there. This was about 80 bucks, I bought that in Singapore, the BT2. 
it sounded much le- much better than the BT-1, which is also produced by Shure. I had a chance to test them side by side. So I would recommend uh, go the extra money. I, you know what? This might have been a little more. This might have been closer to 120 and I think the BT-1 was $80. Uh, but, but you can get these on Amazon in the U.S. for about that price. I, I recommend it. If you're going to use a Bluetooth, this is much better. And if you're going to be on, on phones all the time, you probably want a Bluetooth. Um, the, the best Bluetooth, though, is not going to sound even like an inexpensive wired system. It just, it just won't. I mean, there are things with this wire that I'm not hearing the, the, on the Bluetooth at all. One other thing that you might want to consider. Today, a story came out about how the AirPods um, are putting energy from one AirPod unit to the next. And there's concern that maybe that's going through the skull of the users. And is that any good? Uh, is this this this... EMF, electromagnetic frequency, or whatever else it is that the, the two Bluetooth units have to send through your skull while you're using an AirPod, is that really good for you? Maybe it's no big deal. Maybe it's not a concern. I don't know. Uh, but if it is a concern, and they do prove that it's not good for you, that Bluetooth unit, if you're using something like the Shure, this hangs down on your shirt and you can clip to the front or maybe the back. And these, these wired connectors can go around your ear and you can arrange it however you want to, but the point is this is nowhere near your skull, so it's not sending energy from one unit to the next. And these don't transmit any energy because they're not Bluetooth themselves. They're just regular speakers, little you know monitors inside of there. So it, it could be a safer alternative. I don't know, I don't wanna make predictions, but that came up today and who knows. Finally, with respect to the purchase overall, I think the case that comes with Weststone is not that good. This this particular one is fine for leaving around the house when you want to store your units in there and get the desiccant to do its job. But in terms of traveling, this is a little bigger than what you might want. It came with a smaller one, but that thing broke within a year. It's the same kind of plastic, this sort of cheap, what turned out to be flimsy, orange plastic. It may look a little bit like a Pelican case. It may act like a Pelican case, but it's not a Pelican case. Uh, I have never had a Pelican case give up the ghost the way that small one did here. It uh, Along that part of the hinge, or the, the, the latch, it broke, and I wound up epoxying it back in place, and it lasted a little while, and it broke again, and this rod right there on the smaller one, it was working its way back and forth, and this case is kind of doing the same thing. I think if I use this as much as I use my smaller one, it probably wouldn't last a year also. I think Westone saves money where they can, on cases, on cables, because they know you're really freaking out about the monitor, and they also know that musicians only use professional cables. They don't use the, the cables that come with it. They probably don't travel with these things on their person. You know, they, they have their, their roadies or whoever else travel with them. Um, and then they, they, of course, replace them every so often when they want a different color. So it, the big focus is, is the sound, is the unit itself, the monitors. Um, so the case, you could probably replace with something else, an otter or a real Pelican case. They make small ones. Uh, the cables you can, you, can, you can, of course, replace. And in terms of longevity, that's just up to you how you take care of them. Uh, but even then, they may, uh, they may require uh, refit. Yeah, after four, five years, I'm guessing, use. I'm at three years right now. No regrets at all. They sound great. But there's just a couple of quick updates I wanted to throw out there. Anyway, I appreciate the comments. If you want to leave any, answer whatever questions I can. Thank you.